Competing at and winning a LAN is the pinnacle goal for any esports player. The tension of the atmosphere has everyone watching to see who is going to succumb to the pressure or rise to the occasion. In its short esport history, Apex has had five LANs, filled with unbelievable plays, massive comebacks, and jaw-dropping moments. So these are the most iconic LAN moments in Apex history. Let's start with X Games, Apex's first LAN back in August of 2019. It was the first official time players competed in the lobby against one another rather than a kill race tournament. Unlike the multi-stage format in today's ALGS, this was simply 12 games over two days. No match point. No doubt the most iconic moment from the first LAN comes from none other than TSF. Game 4 had a nail-biting finish, with reps on low HP in a 1v1. Bob and Weave, dive, dick, dump, dive and dodge. Is he able to do it though? The R99 in play. The oh, what a shot from the wing! Man, unbelievable! He's going for the snapshot on the long ball, but it ain't gonna happen. TSM gets the win. That was Hal's knockdown shield was arguably the hero, allowing reps to heal up enough to take the W cementing TSM's first ever win on LAN. By the end of the tournament, this LAN came down to a neck-on-neck -neck finish in the final game, where TSM and Snipedown's team Reciprocity were tied at 109-109. And this was the early signs of TSM's ability to predict zones, get a good endgame spot, and close out tournaments. A lot has changed since X Games, but it established the base for Apex Comp and it introduced us to many of the players we know today. The Poland Preseason Invitational was the tournament to kick off the Apex Legends Global Series. 80 teams from around the world attended, making it the most teams to ever compete in an Apex LAN. Poland truly showed the excitement you can expect from an Apex LAN, like Mimu's win by punching a player he punches you again! or CLG's loser bracket run to get to the match point finals. But one of the most iconic moments had to be Zanaya from 789, an orgless team from Russia that came to the tournament with no one expecting them to do well, until Zanaya pulled this off in the first game of the winner's bracket. It's like a 1v2 here, can they get this? Like yes, indeed, the knock comes in versus one! With the wingman, here we go, can they turn on him? We'll see right here, getting the shot down, also queues out, he stays Winning. alive and goes back inside. They're dominating the trade, but then the shots come back, he needs two more, there we go! Now he doesn't have an opportunity to heal the Watson. Can he get an armor swap, anything in his favor? Exchanging some shots, so weak here. Grabs a beacon, let's see if they can land the shots here. What a story it would swap. be. The if swap, it, yes, no, it's low! It's, it's not the swap they wanted, just going for a kill here. Can he get the shots? There's oh, a nine against my win. gosh! Are you kidding Seven, me? Seven, eight! Nine! It was the first time we saw a massive 1v3 clutch on the big Apex stage and how epic individual Apex games can be. Again, however, we can't talk about the Poland land without talking about TSM. Imperial Hal almost won the tournament on match point game eight, ratting it out as a solo, but he wasn't able to pull through and win the 1v1. It was Albert Lely in his flu game with a towel wrapped around his head who was extremely dominant in the final fight of game 11 that won them the tournament and made TSM the first back-to-back -back champions. TSM, you're your champion. And nothing is more iconic than Alb holding his water bottle next to the trophy in Apex's first trophy lift. Now, if you made it this far, I'd appreciate if you subscribe to the channel. June 10th is the first time I uploaded a video on this channel, and it would be amazing to hit 10k before that. And if you've already subbed but want to continue to support the channel, you can hit the join button and become a member where I'll have exclusive perks just for you. None of this is required, but it is greatly appreciated. So, thank you very much. With that being said, if you've watched my channel before, you're probably tired of hearing me say that the year two split two playoffs in Stockholm, Sweden was the first time the Apex returned to LAN in three years. But that's what made this LAN so special because it was the first time we got to see teams compete on the global stage after having that three years to craft their skill and grow the meta of the game. And the players did not let us down with some insanely hype moments. When I asked my community what they thought the most iconic moment of Sweden was, everyone talked about the double armor swap clutch from Optic Skittle Kicks. Optic entered this tournament as one of the favorites to win, but people were questioning, would they flop without prior LAN experience? They just had Verholz poached from them by TSM, and Skittle Cakes silenced any doubters. Down sharp, getting knocked. Stack turtle, knocked, just trying to stay alive. Yep. Four shots going down, knock gets knocked. Skittle Cakes, the last one alive, can he do it? Some more shots going down, he's gonna get the KP for his team, and it won't be too snare. Is he gonna get the armor stop? He does, and is he gonna win it for his team? Can he do it? The armor stop coming out from Skittles, and it's gonna be one of the- Oh my god! Skittles with an absolute insane! 1v2 with a double armor swap! In my opinion, however, the most iconic and underrated performance of this tournament was Elevate's win in the final game of the loser's bracket round two. Elevate was a team from the South American region, and this region is often seen as the weakest of the five regions in Apex. Going into game six, Elevate was in dead 
last. Only the top 10 make it to Championship Sunday. With only 11 points, they were going to need a monstrous game, some crazy luck, and, well, just see for yourself. All comes down to this final circle for a chance to represent. Will South America have representation? That's the question. As we jump up. Their 23-point win jumped them up in the ninth place and made them the only South American team to make it to the championship finals, where they even went on to win game two out of seven. And then, yes, there's not much more iconic moments than Reignite from the APAC South region winning the entire tournament while playing with JMW as a sub. Last guy! One guy, one guy! Thank you! Thank you. Reignite are your champions of the Apex Legends Global Series. The year two championship in Rally was the hardest tournament to narrow down just a few iconic moments. Optic kicked off the group stages with three back-to-back -back wins. And if you thought that was the last time someone did that, 100 Thieves did it in the first three games of the loser's bracket. Rambo subbed in for GMT and was proving himself to be one of the best controller players in the world. While Nasky was demonstrating he was a world-class IGL, and they perhaps had the most entertaining comms of any other team. Let's fucking go, baby! Let's go! Let's fucking go, baby! Yeah! 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 yeah. yeah. Wait, the crowd is yelling. Is that because we yelled? Are, they, are you listening to us? Yeah! Let's go! Let's fucking go! On the other side of the spectrum, you had Imperial Hal absolutely losing his mind as they almost didn't make it to finals. I like to eat, 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 eat apples and bananas. I like to eat, 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 eat apples and bananas. But there are a couple moments that are no doubt the most iconic. The first goes out to the two Japanese teams, Fennel and Pulverix, that had to compete as duos throughout the entire tournament due to their players and substitutes getting COVID. Fennel actually managed to win a game as a duo. Oh my god, Fennel. Just taking, taking it time. slow, very calm, cool, collected, smart play. Yes, sir, they, they get, the, get the crack and then they're gonna go in. And here we go, man, Fennel! Fennel as a duo! Fennel as a fucking duo, making AOGS history! And Pulverix had multiple top three finishes. They were able to make it all the way to the second loser's bracket, where they were finally eliminated, placing 25th overall. For a duo team, this was an unbelievable performance. And although they didn't win the tournament, they won the hearts of the crowd. Furia's performance, however, was unforgettable. They went from almost not making LAN to introducing the Seer meta and putting out the most damage and kills for the entire tournament. By the final game of the winner's bracket, Furia had already qualified for Championship Sunday, but they wanted to show everyone that they could be the best in the world. Ending with a 3v3 fight between them and Liquid, it will go down as not just one of the most iconic games in Apex LAN, but one of the most iconic moments in Apex history. Yeah, you're good, you're good. I'm over something. Don't give a sh Wait for the bug, wait for the bug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're so okay. I'm good, I'm good. 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 i am good 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 i are you kidding me? The rest of the story you know, on the final day, Dark Zero went on to win match point, becoming the new back-to-back -back land champions, but this time with Jen Burton by their side. And now for the most recent land, the year three split one playoffs in London, another tournament that had several defining moments. There's NRG's 20 kill win in the finals, but I've talked about this twice on my channel already. There's the Hal vs Yuki 1v1. He's but he's one HP! No, There's LG's record game for the most kills and most points during an ALGS LAN.
but the two most talked about moments from my community started with K Swinney in match 5 of the winner's bracket when he no scopes phony head and then punches Luda to win a 1v2 fight. So Clan Eliminator we're down to just 5 squads and 2 bullets with a Kraber it can do so much but Peekaboo oh Swinney no scope with a Kraber and he's gonna go in and try and finish off the damage as well and E6 live for now is Swinney gonna be swapped gets the, gets swap. the shield swap gets the KP needs to stay alive oh. oh. melee does it E6 they go down but they've done enough crazy clip that is immediately followed by a fight between X set LG and Alliance in which Mandy leaves us with the best pop off in Apex the European powerhouse to come in and clean up it's not so easy though smokes are down and they get it alive from top of the wheel, get it done, get on your chair, Mandy popping up. And the next moment comes from former J-Lings member Zane. It's the first day of group stages, his teammates go down with 15 teams left, and Zane goes to work as a solo. A couple of teams in the vicinity, oh! as Zane shreds, and suddenly Urban gets hit to the floor. Oh my goodness, what are you doing to him, Zane? He fights two with the one clips, he's gonna make it. are going to be in the vicinity and they are not going to allow Xet to get away. It's Zane! And Zane is still alive! Zane. Still shredding as he gets into the top five. Zane is insane! Oh! What did you have for breakfast, Zane? I want some as well! Damage, look at this. Zane's like, do you know what? I'll take you all on. He's going to throw the black hole down. He's going to try and finish off one kill. It's another one here for Zane. Surely tries to get the armor swap. Not going to... Pulling off two 1v3 fights and getting a top four finish, Zane turned this bad game into an amazing game for their team. You all know how this tournament ends. TSM reclaims their title as the LAN Kings. The call from Onset is arguably one of the greatest of all time. If you want a deeper dive on these moments, start with this video here, where I covered Dark Zero's entire story and their back-to-back -back wins. And I want to give a huge shout out to my community. They came in absolute clutch, helping me choose the best moments for this video.